Venerable Master Shinran, with deep reverence and gratitude, to Master Shan Tao, wrote these beautiful verses, in his Gatu of True Faith. They precisely capture, the essential teachings, carefully expounded, by this great lineage teacher, of the true Pure Land School. Shan Tao alone understood the Buddha's true intent. Pitying meditative and non-meditative practices and people of grave evil. He revealed that Amida's light and name are the cause and condition of birth. When they enter the wisdom ocean of the primal vow, followers would certainly receive the diamond-like mind. When the one thought moment of joy and gratitude arises, like Vaidehi they would similarly acquire the three insights and instantly realize the eternal bliss of Dharma nature. Thus, this fifth lineage master of Jodo Shin Shu, clearly understood the true intent, for Shakyamuni Buddha's appearance in this world. He emphasized that, in this degenerated age, when people are overwhelmed, by deep-rooted mental and physical defilements, only Amida Buddha's primal vow could save us from samsara, the vicious cycle of birth, suffering and death. Arising from his unique interpretation, of the Meditation Sutra on Infinite Life, and his deep personal realization, Master Shan Tao clearly proves that, through sincere faith, Shinjin, and the great practice of exclusively saying the Buddha's name, Nembutsu, all ordinary foolish persons, would definitely be born in the land of peace and bliss, at the end of their mortal lives. This is made possible, solely by the inconceivable fulfillment, and power of the primal vow. Master Shan Tao, 613-681, was born in China, Shantung Province, during the Sui Dynasty. He became a monk at a very young age, under the tutelage of Venerable Ming Sheng, and among the various teachings he received, he was a very serious scholar of the Avatamsaka and Vimalakriti Sutras. At the age of 20, he took up full ordination and monastic precepts, from Master Miaokai. Searching for a practice that would be in accord with his aptitude, he found the Meditation Sutra on Infinite Life, in his preceptor's library. Filled with ecstatic joy, he diligently practiced, the sixteen meditations taught in the Sutra, and attained deep one-pointed Samadhi, clearly perceiving Amida's pure land with its glorious adornments, as if they were right in front of his eyes. Master Shan Tao's faith in the true pure land path, was fully settled when all his doubts, were cleared on a visit to Master Tao Cho, a senior accomplished teacher, who was very well known for his marvelous expositions and practices, on the true pure land path, at that time. Seriously taking the advice of Master Tao Cho, he abandoned the first thirteen meditations in the Meditation Sutra, and concentrate solely, on the practices that were rooted in Amida's primal vow. He stayed on, and received many precious instructions from his compassionate teacher, till the day, when the elderly master went forth to the Pure Land at the age of 84. Master Shan Tao, was only 33 years old then. As his understanding of the Pure Land path, deepened through further studies, rigorous practices and deep personal realization, Master Shan Tao concluded that, with sincere faith and saying the Buddha's name, Nembutsu, mundane foolish persons, filled with blind passions, would definitely be saved, by the power of the great compassionate vow of Amida Buddha. He was an extremely fervent practitioner himself, by taking refuge and constantly saying the Buddha's name, adoring Amida and praising his infinite virtues. He was always in profound gratitude, mindful of the Buddha's boundless compassion. 
from the clear expositions, in his gate of contemplation and saying the Buddha's name, Canon Bomon, praise for birth in the pure land, Ojo Raisin, and other wonderful writings, Master Shantao earnestly exhorts us, to abandon completely, all double-minded, meditative and non-meditative practices. In rejecting such sundry practices, he tells us, that not one in a thousand could attain birth in the pure land, through such unsettled practices. On the other hand, the one mind of sincere faith, that is expressed by ordinary foolish persons, in single-heartedly saying the Buddha's name, however, absolutely assures every aspirant, birth in the pure land. Prior to Master Shantao, teachings on Amida's pure land, were mostly part of, or mixed, with the other schools, such as Jiantai, Chan or Vahiana. These excellent Mahayana teachings strongly demand, the extremely strict, self-disciplines and keeping of moral precepts, together with the rigorous practices, of concentration and wisdom, from persons of the highest spiritual grade on the path of sages. They are totally beyond the minuscule capabilities, of ordinary foolish persons. Bombu, in this badly tainted Dharma ending age. Mapo, in which everyone is deeply inundated, by the uncontrollable afflictions of greed, hatred, ignorance, arrogance, and doubt. Because of his vast and wide dissemination, of the pure land teachings throughout China, Master Shantao had produced the greatest impact on the society then. Those who listened to him and followed the path of Nembutsu, had numbered in hundreds of thousands, with a huge number of people, even abandoning the household as life. Emperor Gaozhong of the Ming Dynasty revered him deeply and bestowed the name Quang Ming, Wisdom Light, to his temple. Therefore, he was well known, as the master of Quang Ming Temple. Master Shantao was a contemporary of the famous monk Sun Jiang, who had brought back large volumes of Buddhist scriptures from India, after a miraculous journey of more than 10,000 miles, through the wilderness. He stayed for long periods of time at Sun Jiang's Cien Temple, where Buddhist sutras and commentaries written in Sanskrit were translated into Chinese. Master Shan Tao had, during his lifetime, hand-copied more than 100,000 copies of the Amitabha Sutra, and produced over 300 exquisite paintings of the Pure Land, which were presented to his followers, and other Buddhist temples. Among them, is his famous painting of Two Rivers and the White Path, which tells the story of how pathetic persons, like us, can be saved by entrusting in Amida Buddha. It is really fortunate, that many of his writings and paintings, which were completely lost in China, have been carefully preserved for us, in Japan. Today, almost all the Chinese pure land schools, have considered Master Shantao as one of their founding masters. In recent years, a new Pure Land group called the Pure Land School of Shantou Tradition has made its appearance in some countries. For Jodo Shinshu, he has been deeply revered as their fifth lineage teacher. On the 14th of March 681, at the age of 69, Master Shantou left his mortal self and returned to the Pure Land. He has left behind a wonderful legacy, passing down to fortunate persons like us, the precious Nembutsu teaching, the soul lamp lighting the path of salvation, in this Dharma ending age of spiritual darkness. The true pure land Dharma, specially taught by Master Shantao, was the sole interest of Master Shinran, as it directly revealed, the wonderful working of Amida Buddha's universal vow of boundless compassion. The teaching of Master Shantao, essential to Jodo Shinshu, is highlighted by Master Shinran. 
taking pity on the multitudes of lowly gifted, hopeless ordinary foolish persons, like ourselves, who are constantly being overwhelmed, by stubborn blind passions, Master Shantao urged everyone, to rely entirely on Amida's primal vow, and single-heartedly recite the Buddha's name, for their salvation, he exhorts us, to abandon any tendency on our part, to perform meditative and non-meditative practices, as these difficult, self-power practices, are definitely not in accord, with our pathetic spiritual aptitudes, and distracting environments. In his wonderful expositions on the Pure Land teachings, Master Shantao discusses, the performance of the five right practices, namely, reciting sutras, contemplating Amida, and his pure land, worshipping Amida, saying the Buddha's name and praising Amida. Yet, he repeatedly urges, hopeless, wretched persons, Bombu, like us, to put all our attention single-mindedly, on the central or main practice, of saying the Buddha's name, Nembutsu, which is the right act of assurance, that guarantees our birth in the pure land. He asserts, that saying the Buddha's name, with faith in Amida Buddha, is the only path, free from any obstacles, as we are now relying solely, on Amida Buddha's vow power. Thus, the moment when we are able, to entrust ourselves single-heartedly in the primal vow, Amida Buddha's infinite merits and virtues are transferred to us, for our going forth to the pure land. Master Shantao carefully explains, in his marvelous expositions, that the path of the pure land is now, the only appropriate path suitable for the badly defiled, ordinary foolish persons with strong intractable egos, in our Dharma ending age. This wonderful path of faith and Nembutsu, is specially created by Amida Buddha, for spiritual idiots like us. The primal vow, is Amida Buddha's absolute promise to save, all miserable persons like ourselves, who are incapable to perform any spiritual practice. Thus, abandoning all self-powered practices, and single-heartedly relying on this vow of great compassion, is now, the only option available to us, if getting out of samsara at the end of this life, is indeed our goal. Persons with entrusting faith in the primal vow, are truly settled in their minds and hearts, knowing that their attainments of Buddhahood are guaranteed, while they are still living out this precious life in mortal flesh. In trusting faith, Shinjin, on our part, the persons to be saved, is our faith mind consciousness, that fully accept the primal vow without any doubt. It comes about, with our honest awareness, that we are evil beings, who have been transmigrating, from the beginningless past, with absolutely no possibility of escape, from this vicious cycle of relentless pain and suffering. Thus, we accept Amida Buddha's primal vow that embraces us, and that its vow power absolutely guarantees our births in the pure land. We would then, say the Buddha's name, Namo Amida Butsu, for the rest of our fleeting lives, and thus remembering, the inconceivable compassion of the Buddha, for having saved, miserable persons like us. Stage of the truly settled, also called the stage of non-retrogression, is instantly received by foolish beings, like us, the very moment, here and now when we are able to entrust our karmic destiny, fully to the primal vow. As we are now relying solely on the Buddha's vow power, we are absolutely assured of Buddhahood, without going through trillions of lives, performing self-power, difficult practices, on the Bodhisattva's path. Listening deeply to the true pure land expositions of Master Shinran, Highlighting the wonderful explanations, on the true relevance and significance, 
of the wonderful teaching of faith and Nembutsu, strongly emphasized by Master Shantao, may all foolish mundane persons like us, follow only, the true pure land path. May all suffering persons, mindfully take heed of the benevolent advice of these truly accomplished teachers. Let us seize this extremely rare opportunity, and make full use of this precious human birth, before it quickly comes, to the inevitable end. Thus, abandoning all self-power meditative and non-meditative practices, we say the Buddha's name. Knowing that we are now, constantly being embraced and protected by Amida Buddha, we have, without any doubt, heard the call of boundless compassion. The Buddha's infinite merits and virtues are bestowed equally on all beings. May all accept Amida's gift of Shinjin and obtain birth in his land of peace and bliss. Namo. Amida. Butsu. Namo. Amida. Butsu. Namo. Amida. Butsu.